Alright, so we are back with our new launch review series and this time around we are heading on to Copa and Newton. So just a brief about what we are doing here at PLB, we have this goal in mind which is to cover all the different types of new launches that is available right now, meaning that there are still balance units to go or perhaps it's going to be launched very soon. Right now, there's a balance of close to about 50 odd percent left. A little bit about the backdrop of this project is that this is a District 9 development. It's located at a very prime location in Newton. Developer is CEL. It's actually sitting on a pretty huge plot. So in terms of the plot size, that is about 11,643 square meters. And there is this allocation in terms of the percentage in which the communal facilities are are being allocated. So there are two towers, block 6 and block 8, and the two towers only stand about 30% of the land size. 70% is actually being allocated to the landscaping, the, the pool, the facility zone. So I would say if you are buying this for own stay, it's going to be quite enjoyable because there's going to be very beautiful landscaping and, and facilities. So the median price here is at about 2,003 to 2,004 per square foot. Of course, some of the time, the smaller units with a smaller square footage usually have a higher per square foot and of course the bigger ones lower per square foot key rationale is because the overall quantum for the smaller units is still very palatable even though if the developer would price it higher so going back to this this project of course a lot of people will be asking you know this is a district 9 project i know it's a, in a great location but it is holding a tenor of 99 years compared to some of the freehold counterparts that's surrounding the region itself so let's have a look at the map first this is extremely close to newton mrt 370 meters away it's actually surrounding the circumference of newton circles of course over there there's the Newton flyover and Bukit Timah Road is on that flyover zone that stretches all the way. If you travel left, you will bypass uh, KKH Hospital and of course you will head down towards dual residence from there. This zone is sort of the beginning of District 9. So in terms of location, I think no complaints. Before we go into the stack analysis, it's always very important to understand the breakdown. Just to give you an example, let's say you buy into a new launch development that's like 1,000 units, but uh, maybe the three betas made out of like 600 units, and then the two betas is like 100 odd units, one beta is 100 odd units, four beta maybe less than 100 units, but predominantly, let's say it's like more than 50%, there are three betas. Then you definitely have to consider the point about choosing be one of the better three betas because in future when you want to exit three to four years later, there's going to be a whole lot of three betas for sale and all these three betas are going to be a future competition. Having a look at this, three, seven, eight units, two towers, 23 storey each is broken down into one to five betas. Most of the units would then fall into the one, two and three betas. Four betas is only about 45 units. Uh, five betas is just 21 units. Uh, I would say that it's pretty well spread. It's not too concentrated on one type of layout. Copa does fall into the new requirement. Uh, the link is right down below. So government has came up with a new requirement that the units cannot be too small. And of course, this plot right here is Atelier. This is slightly closer to Atelier. This, you still have a good 30 meter setback from Atelier. So you also have the pool view. If you are to look at the pricing, on what is the balance unit, usually we will have this like distribution chart here, having a look at what are some of the balance units and of course, what has been a take up rate based on the behavior of the buyers whom have already bought into Copa. Most of the units that were being sold are actually the low floors all the way to the mid levels. Usually people will want to go for like, you know, the best facing, the highest level for. The way that it is being sold tells us something on what buyers think about this locale as well. So why are the lower floors being taken up first and then gradually moving upwards in terms of sales. It could be because buyers in this zone, they might be already thinking, hey, I'm buying into the D9 address. Maybe what's more important to me is that I want to keep the quantum very manageable. Instead of buying a one beta at about 1.3 odd million dollars at a high floor, why don't I get something at 1.2 million dollars at a slightly lower floor? I can cut off a hundred odd thousand dollars by living at a low level. I still get to enjoy the facilities. And even if I were to rent it out, Maybe the difference is just a couple of hundred dollars, maybe two hundred dollars difference in terms of rental from my low floor versus the high floor. Thereby, looking at this entire chart, the lower floors are like mainly taken up. Of course, the higher floors are still available. Another way to look at it is that I just need to compare the balance units 
across about the same level. Let's say if I look at level 15 across board, for stack 4 and 5, that will be at about 1.2 odd million dollars. If I look at level 14 for stack 14 this is at about 1.3 odd million dollars now the difference between the two stacks here and here is about 100k difference for level 14 it means that the developer has focused the premium stack to be around this pool zone apart from the floor level price difference there is also stack differences in terms of pricing what this shows is that when the developer planned this they would know that you know this is like the more premium kind of facing that they are pricing it this is a slightly lesser premium and of course this is to balance out in terms of facing and price because when this is facing towards the orchard view just to compensate for a little bit of the traffic noise coming from here the price content is slightly lower so what does this translate in terms of sales so it seems also that stack 9 is like the more popular stack because the overall quantum for every unit is lesser than stack 12 two big classic dumbbell layout means that the moment you come in you bypass your kitchen left right are the two bathers dumbbell layout the key differential is that you do not waste or walkway space take note that for the classic model you only have one bathroom which is like a jack and jill if you are going for the deluxe model you have two baths you have an ensuite and a common bath the rest of the space i would say is perhaps about the same so you are paying additionally 75 square feet difference for the additional bathroom plus the walkway space you might then be interested in looking at the three beds model so what is the, the key difference if i look at stack six it will be this bigger one 958 square feet and then stack 16 will be the 915 square feet i think the only difference based on what i see here is only the foyer walkway the developer has priced the psf for stack 6 to be slightly lower so perhaps because it's facing towards the entrance zone as well so stack 6 is actually lower psf compared to stack 16 and then if we look at the final two version which is the three bed deluxe model key difference you have a wc in the kitchen the kitchen is longer than the classic version you have an additional walk-in wardrobe in your master you have an additional household shelter within your walkway uh, thereby explaining the extra square footage so the three bedroom deluxe they are all 1055 there's only one bigger one at 1098 so four bedders will then be easy as well this facing towards pool stack 15 and then facing outward so i think roughly you get a sense about how the developer has priced it all right so for the final segment let's talk about some of the price behavior uh, right around Copa because this is of course the key determinant point okay so sometimes it will be a little bit hard to compare because if you want to compare resale freehold around here vis-a-vis -vis, um, Copa and Newton being a 99s brand new of course if you compare boutique developments you will find one phenomenon is that why are some boutique freehold projects lower in PSF compared with the 99s counterpart in the same locale and this is very common around the entire Singapore if you have seen Palm Haven which is a triple nines triple nines in Singapore is like as good as freehold so it's located within the Coven enclave and so Palm Haven is at 1001 we launched it at about 1.4 million dollars so it was sold after we launched the video for three days it was like instantly step up and of course the four main huge projects around the Coven MRT station which is Coven Melody, Coven Residences, Coven Regency and Stars at Coven their PSF is so much higher than Palm Haven and Palm Haven is like 1001 but all the 99 years big projects surrounding the MRT station is like 1003, 1004, 1005, 1006 per square foot largely it's because of the way valuation is being done in Singapore for private projects and the transaction volume that a bigger development will have and of course with high transaction volume valuation sometimes they increase at a much faster pace compared to a boutique project with a lesser transaction volume have a look at Copa and Newton based on this land plot uh, maybe I will first compare with some of the larger projects first so right across there's this project called Trilight I will first look at how many units they have so Trilight firstly it is not in D9 it is in D11 because it already crosses away from the D9 zone of course the beauty is that it's freehold 205 units considered having that full size condo with a tennis court pool because i think it's beautiful as well the first thought is that if i'm somebody that wants to live in this zone and i want to look for at least a two beta what can i buy around this area when i buy something here at copa at about 1.7 million dollars for example 
what will be my competition level from this freehold neighbors next time? If I look at Trilight, predominantly huge apartments, all thousand one plus square feet. These are basically uh, the units that are for sale right now. This is like, you know, you need to have at least 2.4 to maybe a 2.6 million dollars range in order to land yourself a two bedder. Of course, you get huge space at a higher quantum. PSF is about 2002 plus minus. This is a quantum. It, is, it won't be an apple to apple comparison. If we just talk about quantum affordability point of view as a buyer, I have let's say $1.7 million. I can get a two beta right here. I cannot get a two beta right here. Okay, so it seems that these are huge. If I look at the three bits category, right now in Copa, if I want to get a three beta, I will need at least a 2.2 plus to 2.4 plus for a classic layout. I will just take it at 2.4 to 2.6 to get myself a three beta here. There is this project here called Miro, 85 units. 2012, I want to see any competition for three betas. Okay, so there are three betas. So this is a duplex, huge, 1006, $2.7 million. So of course the key determinant then will be, do I want to live in a smaller development? So there are other factors to consider, not just on the facilities, the size, MCSD fees. If I move outwards, there's this project called Soleil at Sinaran. 99 years. Tano is from 2006, 14 years already, now it's 2020. D11 and uh, 417 units. Right beside Novena MRT station, hot location, huge plot, beautiful facilities, 99 years, 417 units. Why is it that the per square foot seems to be so much higher than some of the freehold counterparts? Okay, seems to me that the transaction volume looks pretty healthy. Per square foot trading, it seems to me the average is about 1006 to 1008. So uh, if I were to look back at this D11 vis a vis Copa, which is comparable because it is also near to Newton MRC station, similar size 378 units, that's about 41 plus units. So in order to get, now this is like a fresh lease, that is a 14 years old project, this is a fresh lease, 1.6, 1.8 million dollars, two beta. Um, I think that's a key reason why it's moving. And of course, if you look at the three bidders right here at Solar Sinaran, perhaps it's going at about 2.2 odd million dollars, 2.8 million dollars. We all know because as every government land sales is pushed out into the market, developers bid, there's a certain price that they enter, construction costs, the margin, definitely the launch price will be of a range that is much higher than the resale counterpart. How we see this is we use this calculator that we decipher ourselves. So we call this our land cost PSF calculator. If I compare Soleil and then I compare Copa, what is the actual PSF on the surface right here? If I were to reset both of them, resuscitate both projects to a fresh 99 years, what is the actual PSF that I'm paying for a full 99 years? Is this for Soleil will be about 2,188. This is at 2,639. Then I will have a better picture because it would then mean that now if I buy Copa, I know I'm paying 2,006, but when I look back at Soleil, it's actually about 2,002 because this is a slightly older project, lesser years in terms of runway to go. Right? Most importantly, I think there are also other intangible factors when it comes to justifying whether do you want to go for the new ones compared to the resale one. All right, so uh, I think we're about there. So pretty long session today on the analysis. I think um, we might want to round off uh, with introduction to our show flat series. And of course, when we head on to Copa show flat, we're going to bring one of our inside sales team, listing manager or listing specialist, uh, just to show you around the different kinds of layout as well. And uh, also to have a look at the actual site plan plus the actual show flat. Of course, if you want to really uh, sit down and have a full analysis, you can contact us at the link below. Uh, we do have a consult session where we um, talk about more in-depth stuff and then we analyze based on our personal situation. Of course, uh, we always advise that buying a property is, uh, is not a small decision. You should not do it hastily. You should really sit down, analyze the surroundings, understand a little bit more about the numbers before you make that decision of yours. All right, so we'll come to the end of today's session and uh, I'll see you soon. My name is Melvin Lim, so always happy to show you the place. Take care.